In this video, we've got a Western Star crane truck with a cat engine in it that's making oil. What could be causing it to make oil? Well, there's various things, but in this video, we're gonna be showing you how to troubleshoot it and how to identify what the problem is. Hey guys, Josh with the Depth Channel, and in this video, we are working on a local crane truck that is making oil. That's right, folks. The oil level is increasing. Now, what would cause that? Well, generally, you're getting fuel in the oil. You can also have coolant in the oil, but that usually gives you different symptoms. His oil's thinning out. He's not losing coolant. He has no rust or steam, so pretty much know it's fuel. The oil seems really thin, and it's clear, so... We're going to assume, based on that without taking an oil sample, that it's fuel. Try to troubleshoot the symptoms and then go from there. So, customer, this is a customer that comes in a lot. And we actually rebuilt this engine a while ago, I believe five years ago. And it seemed like it had a little bit of a miss to me, so I did a quick cutout test. He brought it in for it making oil, though, which means fuel's getting into the oil. And if you look at the fuel numbers there, number five seems weak to me. Looks like cutout one. 1.74, 1.75 on the fuel position. I'm looking on the right. It's only going to about 1.70 or 1.69. Uh, that jumped up to about 1.78. So five seems a little weak, just something to keep an eye on. Not necessarily tied to what we're doing here. So what we are doing here is we're going to be putting this Gas Glow 32 in here, but there's a variety of companies that make this stuff. And that's the best way I've found, although some people disagree. What do you mean you don't agree with me? So we're, all we're going to do is we're going to pull the fuel filter. Don't need to remove it completely because I've got a little trick. I use a stainless steel flavor injector, and I'll show you what I'm doing. But we're going to pull off the secondary fuel filter. And this is the one that supplies fuel that is closest to the cylinder head. If you go with the primary, which is generally the fuel water separator, it might take a lot longer for the dye to get in there. Now, generally, you don't want to be putting stuff directly into the filter because you could be contaminating it. But since we have a known fuel dilution problem here, we want to get it resolved as fast as possible. So this is the flavor injector needle thing I'm talking about here. And all we're going to do is pull about three or four ounces out of the filter because we're going to install that ultraviolet dye and hopefully be able to find it. So once we pull that three or four ounces out, we're gonna pull this one ounce container in. And generally I find all you need is one. And then once that's in, we're going to put it in the filter and then run it. Now I was saying that when it's making oil or getting fuel dilution, that's of course fuel in the engine oil, but I didn't say what generally causes fuel to get in the engine oil. And what it normally is on cat engines is an injector or the injectors. I've heard of the fuel transfer pumps causing it, cracks in the cylinder head, problems with the high pressure pump or something. This one doesn't have a high pressure pump, but I've only ever seen injectors cause it in the 17 years that I've worked for Caterpillar. Not saying that's always the cause, but you're probably gonna find it is usually the cause, at least on CAD engines. Now, the next thing we need to do, and the engine is still warm, is run it for about 30 to 45 seconds and go from there. Beep! Hey, perfect time. Okay, so once it's done running, we're gonna take our valve covers off using my Milwaukee 3.8 right angle impact here. I really like this tool. Someone was saying if you use the larger, like four amp hour batteries, it hits a lot harder. So I'm gonna have to try that. This customer also has these nice stainless steel shouldered headed bolts. Those are not the original factory bolts. So someone really cares about this engine. It's pretty clean. And this guy's pretty smart. So what he was doing, he noticed it was getting fuel dilution. He would drain some oil out and add more oil to keep the viscosity higher. Smart guy. So we're looking for, of course, any damage to the engine. Remember number five was a little weak. So we're gonna take a look at the rockers and stuff on that. But 
we're looking mostly at the injectors for what potentially could be the cause. And you might notice it looks really clean in here. The oil's not very black. Remember, it's fuel diluted, so it's going to look a lot cleaner because the oil is a lot thinner and diluted. So this is our oil dye through the yellow glasses and with a black light. Now this black light I'm using is kind of a cheap $20 one with the glasses. I don't like it very much. But you, it will pick up. You'll see that it works here. You can see the fuel filter there with the dye. Look at that. But you, you need to use the glasses, which is a pain. And they make, and our old truck used to have a very nice, powerful, filtered, ultraviolet light. So I never really relied on this little one that I have. And here's a picture of one I just ordered this morning of a high-powered filtered one. If I would have had this one, this would have made this job a lot easier. So, like I said, I just ordered it. However, I don't have it yet. So, I'm using my cheapy one. So, what we're looking for is damage to the injectors, predominantly, or some sort of streak. Now, notice it kind of looked orange where I'd written high and the smiley face, but generally I find it looks more green when it's mixed with engine oil. And... It's hard to tell at first. It takes a trained eye to see what we're looking for. So I'm just checking as thoroughly as I can. The, the, a filter high power one will illuminate it much faster than this one, but we can still find it with this one, I assure you. Hopefully without removing much stuff. Of course, we move the valve cover base and stuff to make it easier to find, but we are not going to do that yet. We're just looking for any uh, destruction. This week's Destruction of the Week is from Kevin with two E's, and this is a Cummins, luckily. Look at that oil pan. That's that's not what you want in your oil pan there, folks. We got all sorts of stuff. That looks like a wrist pin snap ring. Probably not good. That is part of a piston, what appears to be, or possibly a liner. Not sure exactly yet, but oh, that's neat. I remember Jerry sent us a picture with a sideways piston like that and of course the uh always infamous hole in the side of the engine block a lot of destruction good quality pictures here thank you kevin for submitting these so let's get back to work here folks so i could not find the streak i was looking for so what we're going to do is we're going to use the hand priming pump and pump it up for about a minute under high pressure here or as high as it'll go now what we're looking for is something on the injectors who are underneath one of the injectors. Oh, look at that. See how it's more green even though it looked orange on the bench? That's what we're looking for. Now the engine tilts slightly back. So this is cylinder number five, which was the slightly weak one. So it's going to naturally kind of drain backwards. So the forward most point is probably the source of the dilution. So we're going to say it's number five here. If you find more than one injector leaking, I generally recommend replacing all six. But this one, we only find one, which means I know what I need to do. I know now what I must do. And what that is, is remove this injector. So we're going to be breaking the bolts here loose. Now, unlike the Assert engines, where they use double-sided studs on this engine, which is the 346E, the rocker, or not the rocker, the jake bolts go through both the jake and the rocker. So once you pull those loose, you'll be able to re remove both housing. Now, a little known fact here. These older cats, so 346E and the C-15s, used actual Jacobs branded housings. When they went to the assert engines, they were actually cat compression brakes. So function exactly the same but it's just basically the manufacturer was different so i always I, like i said in the previous video where we were doing the camshaft troubleshooting i like to break them loose by hand and by hand i mean with a ratchet and then once they're loosened i'll then use an electric impact now it's hard to tell but that cowl or the doghouse area there makes it difficult to get those out so having that right angle impact kind of helped a lot and that ratchet I was using, that was just a snap-on fine tooth. I've been using one of those straight ones, not the bendy hen ones, and it's a long, like, uh, I think it's 18 inches or something. Uh, I've been using it a lot. I used to use my half inch, but the 3 eighths is a lot lighter and pretty strong. 
broken a lot of half inch bolts with it and stuff not broken them but loosened them so once we get our rocker and jake housing off we can then pull number five injector which is what we're going to be doing right now now of course if you're doing this you're going to want to do an overhead at least on number five and six because you've pulled those but generally it's a good idea to just do a full overhead if you're going to be doing you know one third of the engine why not do the whole engine so here we are we're just going to pull that injector what i was doing there before was just seeing if i could see any physical damage to the injector like the spring was broken or you know something else going on but the camshaft looked like it's in good shape Injector hold down bolt come right out. Uh, cat injector hold down bolts are not reusable, folks, so don't ever reuse them as per cat guidelines. Then we're just going to use our indexing heel bar. C15 injectors, once you get the overhead off, are super easy to remove, unlike C7 injectors. Now, like I was saying before, I've only ever seen injectors cause this. I have heard of transfer pumps causing this. It is potential because they do have a seal they could potentially go into the crankcase the head could possibly crack some weird way because there is a rail through the head where pressure is fed to the injectors but like i said usually the injectors themselves the injector seals can blow out also on i've seen that on c7s a couple times but usually what will happen is it'll put huey pressure oil into the fuel tank on a c7 or c9 opposed to generally putting fuel into the oil now a dead cylinder with cylinder damage can also cause fuel dilution and that's because the injector will still be firing but it's not actually igniting so it's just dumping into the crankcase now this is weird line here that yellowish line i believe i could be wrong that that's the fuel dye and that's where it's leaking out tried to pressurize it but you can't really when it's out of the engine so we found what the cause is i will leave you with this thanks for watching I have comedy. I should do bloopers. That'd be great. Falling down like eighteen times. Beep. Hey, perfect time.